Okay, so um, we're going to talk very briefly about how these neural networks are trained. And the reason I'm, I'm going to talk about this briefly is because this step, this training step, is actually kind of the most complicated step um, in terms of understanding how the neural networks operate. And um, instead of sort of going over all of the details, I'm going to sort of refer you to, to a video that you can watch if you want some you know, more in-depth information about exactly how this training routine works, okay? Um, but I'm going to give you just the bare gist of it, okay? And so the gist of it is simply as follows, okay? So um, let's say, okay, that the at the end of this whole process, right, the, the, this process that I described before where these neurons are passing values to each other and then, you know, multiplying by the weights, and then putting them through the activation functions. Okay, let's suppose that at the end of this whole process, we get a prediction for the value of the whole. And let's say just hypothetically that that predicted value is 100,000. Okay. And let's suppose further that the true value of the whole is 120,000. Okay, well, obviously then my prediction was incorrect. It was $20,000 too low. Okay, and so in that case, we would say that the error function or, I'm sorry, in that case, we would say that the size of the error is minus $20,000. Okay. Well, what we're then going to do, based on that particular observation, is we're simply going to adjust the weights in our neural network. Okay. And in particular, the computer has sort of a, it has sort of a process for identifying which weights are the most important ones to update. Okay, um, for example, okay, so in this case, we found that the predicted value was too low. Okay, so for example, the, the artificial neural network then might decrease the value of these two negative weights. When I say decrease them, I mean make them less negative, right? So this, this negative weight here is minus uh, 0 0.23. It might, you know, change that to minus 0 0.22. Okay, same thing with this one. This is a minus 11 something here. Maybe it'll change it to a minus 10 or a minus 9. Okay, at the same time, this positive weight here, okay, this 26 something value, well, it might up that positive weight and it might change it to maybe a 28 or a 29. Okay, and so by doing this, by nudging these weights in the appropriate direction, Okay, we'll get it so that the next time we pass this same information through this neural network and getting, instead of getting a predicted price of 100,000, we might get a predicted price of, let's say, you know, 110,000. Okay, well, that would be a lot better. That would decrease the size of our error down to 10,000. Okay, and if we were to keep going with this process, nudging the weights, nudging the weights, nudging the weights, we would eventually get the correct prediction or something very close to a correct prediction out of this neural network. Okay. Now, of course, in reality, you'd be training the neural network more, with more than one observation. Okay. So obviously, if we, if we were just trying to match this 120,000 number, we could adjust the weights until our predicted value is very close to it. But we're not just trying to match the price of that one hole, right? What we're, going, what we're doing is we're going through and we're, we're going through every single observation in our data. Right. So, for example, you know, for the uh, for this initial neural network, right, I pictured that, you know, the initial number of bedrooms was two and the age of the house was 10. So let's say that that's the first observation in our data. OK, but then the next observation in our data might be that, you know, a house that has four bedrooms and that's 30 years old. OK, well, OK, so we would, you know, feed that feed those numbers through. We would get a predicted value. And then when we're training the neural network, then we would have to train the neural network to try to minimize the error of that observation as well. Okay. And so we're not just trying to match, we're not just trying to reduce the error of one single observation, but instead we're trying to minimize the total error of the predicted values of every single data point in our data. Okay. Okay. Um, I hope that makes some amount of sense. Like I said, we're, we're going to glaze over the details of some of this because, you know, this is, for, for the purposes of our class, it's not so important that you understand all of the details of how these neural networks are trained. Okay. 
Um, but if you want more information about that, um, like I said, just go ahead and watch this video. This video will, will go through the gory, uh, the gory details of how this training process is done. Okay. Um, maybe one additional thing I should say, just one additional thing, okay, is that, you know, the algorithm that's used for nudging these weights in order to reduce the error, okay, um, these algorithms, um, they've, uh, they've sort of been improved over the years, okay. And initially, the algorithms they were using were not very good. And then um, someone invented uh, a very popular algorithm uh, called backpropagation, okay. Um, and this backpropagation process is actually what this video talks about. Um, this backpropagation training algorithm has now become very popular. And so the majority of neural networks today are trained using some variant of this backpropagation technique. Okay. Okay. So, um, um, uh, so enough of the theory then. Um, uh, next, we're just going to go jump into R. I'll explain some of the pre-processing steps that are necessary before we feed data into a neural network. And then um, I'll talk about your homework where you will build your own neural network and test it out.